and welcome to another cheap art supply challenge and yes I know there have been some comments about my way to pronounce the word cheap and yes I know it sometimes sounds like I'm saying sheep like the animal sheep but I know you understand what I mean but if I would happen to say sheep in this video and it would confuse you it's supposed to mean like inexpensive and not the animal so now no one will be confused let's move on with the challenge I decided to go with the water-based felt tip markers this time that got a really creepy panda figure on it with staring eyes and one huge paw and it seems like most of you wanted me to try out these pens next, which I also wanted, so I got 18 colors for about $1, so these are some pretty cheap pens. Uh, I also have these wax crayons and some color pencils left to use, so let me know which one I should use next. I don't know how I came to think about it, but I really wanted to make a tiger for this challenge and it's weird sometimes how a certain thing just pop up in your head and you need to draw it, so yeah, a tiger it is and I used a photo reference for this since I haven't drawn that many tigers in my days. Then I made a little color chart to see what colors I had to work with and I think I used almost all of them besides of the super yellow neon one and the grey one that was pretty dark I think. So I knew this would be a tricky challenge before I even started because I used this kinds of pen a lot and I loved them as a kid. So I knew this would destroy the paper if I would even try to make a lot of layer or add too much colors on one spot. With alcohol based markers that I'm used to work with like Copics or Pro markers, you can pretty much make as many layers as you like without it affecting the paper. But these are water-based markers, so they don't really work the same way at all. And you can't really blend them or do lots of layering. So I thought that I would need to do this in a different way, trying to go more easy with the coloring and not saturate the paper too much, which would cause it to crumble and tear. So I went with some sort of cross-hatching technique with a very light hand, so I wouldn't have to move the pen around a lot on the paper, because the more you move the pen around and you rubbed it against the paper, the more you risk the paper to come apart. So, and the cross-hatching and kind of stippling technique worked surprisingly well. I actually like the sketchy look that the cross-hatching gives the drawing. And sure, the paper still crumbled a little, but it wasn't that bad. One thing I noticed though is that when the paper started to crumble and the top layer of the paper got removed, it caused the color to bleed really easy, which made the eyes of the tiger look a bit weird. So even if these pens got a really fine nib that isn't really made for larger area fills, this pens actually works a lot better on larger areas than on smaller ones. Uh, it also worked better if you made like quicker strokes, so the ink didn't really have a chance to go into and soak the paper too much. Also, I'm using watercolor paper because for some reason I thought it would be it would work well since it's made to stand a lot of water and such, but now afterwards I wonder if it wouldn't be better if I had used a smoother paper, like a Bristol board or something, that is not gripping the pens as much like the grain in the watercolor paper did. And I'm actually really happy with how this tiger is turning out. It may be cheap pens, but the colors are very vibrant. The camera is not picking up on the colors that well though, but it looks super colorful, almost like neon. It's very bright. And I was completely set on that this would be a really difficult and unsatisfying challenge and experience, but I found myself really enjoying making this drawing and using the colors and creating different textures and doing the cross hatching. It was to me a new and fun way to draw with markers and I actually wouldn't really mind using these kinds of pens again. So these might be some of the cheapest pens I've ever used, but there's really nothing wrong with them, because the actual pens itself is not that bad if you compare with the cheap and terrible ballpoint pens that I used for my previous cheap supply challenge. And yes, this makes the paper crumble and come apart, but I recently tried some other water-based markers that are a lot more expensive than these ones, and they also destroy the paper, so I guess that's just the thing with water-based fiber tip marker. Uh, how cheap or expensive they are, they work pretty much the same way, even if the more expensive ones are just slightly nicer to work with. 
So these pens may not be of the best quality, but art supplies don't need to cost a fortune to be fun to draw with. You might just have to adjust a little and be creative and work out the technique that works well with the art supplies you're using. So yeah, I'm really happy with the outcome. I think the background turned out so pretty. The green grass and plants looks really nice against the orange tiger, which makes it pop even more, I think. And I'm super happy with how the tiger itself turned out. I like all the little dots and stripes on its fur. I hope you liked this drawing as well. Leave a like and a comment if you did. I always appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my artsy videos. Keep on drawing my happy cats, bye!